Welcome to W3IT Tutorials. Hi, I am Tinto Chaco from W3IT Tutorials. This is the fourth video of series HTML5 Essential Training. Today we are going to discuss about the basic structure of an HTML document. A complete HTML document has several important parts. Let's take a look at what some of them are. I am going to open it in my text editor. I am using Notepad++ here on this PC. You can use whatever text editor you like on a PC or on a Mac, or on any platform, as long as it's a plain text editor and not a word processor or an HTML editor. So this is a minimal document with a number of typical elements that you'll see in a lot of HTML documents. This is not the minimum allowable document. It's just a small document with some basic elements that you will probably want to include in most of your HTML documents. The objective here is to have a basic understanding about the structure of an HTML document and many of these subjects will be covered in more detail throughout the rest of the videos of this course. So here on the first line, we have the doc type declaration. The purpose of this is to tell the browser what version of HTML to be expecting in the rest of the document. If you've seen doc type declarations before, you'll notice that this one is very, very simple. This is the way the doc type declaration is supposed to look in an HTML5 compliant document. The old versions of HTML have a much more complicated doc type that includes a DTD and things like that. Because HTML has now been divorced from SGML, we don't need a DTD. A DTD is actually no longer even a valid thing to do, and so, the purpose of this doc type declaration has become just to tell the browser, don't use quirks mode, use standards mode. This is a standards compliant document. So the doc type element looks like this. It has a left angle bracket, an exclamation point, the word doc type all in capital letter, and the word HTML separated by a space in all lowercase and a right angle bracket. It should be the very first thing in your document before any comments even before any white space. If it's not the very first thing, it will work in some browsers. It won't work in other browsers. So you just put it at the very top before any of your comments or anything else. You get used to putting it there and it'll do its job across the board. The next thing in this document is a comment, and you'll see that here on line 3, a comment is introduced by a left angle bracket, and an exclamation point followed by two dashes. And this is all very important, so it's all of these pieces here. Leaving out any of these pieces will make it work as a comment in some browsers and in some browsers, they won't know it's a comment and they'll try to do something else with it. So it's a good idea just always do your comments like this with all four of those characters, the left angle bracket, the exclamation point, the two dashes. And then at the end of the comment, you have these three characters the two dashes and a right angle bracket. And again, some browsers might not insist on the space after the two dashes at beginning and before the two dashes at the end. Some browsers might allow white space in between some of these things. But the point is, is that if you want it to be interpreted as a comment across the board, just always do it that way and it will always work. You can't have all kinds of space and multiple lines and things like that inside your comment, so this all works just fine like that. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of all this extra white space that we introduced, and save it, and now we have just our little one-line comment. 